Today, I'm gonna to show you step-by-step step everything you need to know to set up your first project in Final Cut Pro, edit your video, and then export it for the world to see. I've broken up the video into sections and you can use the timestamps below to jump around or rewatch any sections as you need. All you need is a copy of Final Cut Pro and you're good to go. I've been a content creator for about four years now and I've used all the main video editing softwares and Final Cut Pro is the one I always recommend to people who are just getting started and it's the one I still use myself every single week for all of my content. So let's jump onto the MacBook and get stuck into it. I might make some references here and there in comparisons to Premiere Pro just because that's the most popular editing software and some of you might be moving across from that. But this tutorial will also suit anybody who has no background in video editing. All right, so here we are inside Final Cut and this is the first thing you'll see as soon as you open it up. This is just the default view. The first thing we're gonna do is just set up a whole new video project. And it's actually really straightforward. So all you have to do is just go File, New, and then Library. Now this is a little bit different to other editors like Premiere Pro because a library is essentially one file that contains all of your project files, including things like render files. So for me, each new video project that I work on, I'll create a new library file. So I'm just gonna put that into this folder here. I'm just gonna name it tutorial. Hit save. So you just save it in the location where you want the library to be stored. Just note that library file will get really big. So make sure you've got lots of space in the place that you save it to. All right, so now that we've saved that library, you'll see up here, we've got our tutorial library created. And then beneath that, we've got two items. We've got smart collections and this little star icon with a date. And this star icon with the date is basically what you wanna focus on, which is an event. Now you can use events in different ways, but the way I use it is, I kind of think of it as like the main folder for the video project that I'm working. I might just rename this and call it long form video. All right, so now we've got our project set up and we've got two options here. We can either import media or we can go new project. So I typically start by going new project. So I hit new project and I might name this desk setup feature. And then from here, you can set the format of your video. So I want it to be 4K. This is the correct resolution that I want it at. I want it to be 25 frames per second, so that's good. And then the default rendering is at Apple ProRes 4 to 2, and that's fine. Stereo audio, 58 kilohertz sample rate, all good. And then just hit okay. And as you can see within our event, we've now got a project and that's opened up our timeline and a preview window. Now there's no point having a project without actual video files to edit. So let's import some video files. Now there's a couple of ways to import. You can go file, import media, and this will bring up an import window. Just for the sake of simplicity, the way I usually do it anyway is to just go to the folder where I have the footage that I want to use. I literally just select all the footage and just drag and drop it straight into the event. And there you go, you've got all your footage ready to go. Now, before you go any further, one of the best things to do is to organize your project because once you start bringing in all sorts of different media, music, that type of thing, it can get really complicated really quick. Now, if you're coming from Premiere Pro, you're probably used to using bins and folders, but within Final Cut, the, essentially the equivalent is keyword collections. Right click on your event, you can see here, new keyword collection. So we just go new keyword collection and then we can name it whatever we want. So I might name it footage and then I might also create another keyword collection called audio and you can basically think of these as like folders. So you can put whatever media you want into each folder. So I might go back to my event where my footage is. And I'm just gonna select it all and then drag it into the footage section. Now they've all got a blue line through them now, which you can see. And this basically just means that they're in a keyword collection. So if I go to the footage folder, all my footage has now appeared in here, which is really good for organizing all your footage or your audio. You can create as many keyword collections as you like. So that's super handy. So from here, now we can just literally get a piece of footage and just drag and drop it into our timeline. And then if we hit spacebar, that will start to play our footage in the timeline. Which brings us to part two of this tutorial, which is understanding your workspace. So I'm just gonna go through everything you're seeing in front of you, just so that you get an idea of where everything is. So like we've already gone through, just up here on the top left, we've got the libraries sidebar. And you can just think of it as kind of like folder navigation. You can actually open up multiple libraries 
and drag and drop media between different libraries if you need to. So that's good to keep in mind. And then just above here, so this is the button for your library sidebar. Next to that, we've got the photos, videos, and audio sidebar. This basically just lets you select photos, music, stuff like that that's already organized on your Mac. But because I don't use photos or Apple Music, there's nothing in here. So I pretty much don't use this tab at all. It does have some built-in sound effects that come with Final Cut, which could come in handy depending on the project you're using. There's quite a lot in here and you can just search through them. So that's worth keeping in mind. And then next to that, you've got the titles and generators sidebar. And this is where all of your titles and generators are stored. Now we're gonna come back to this, so I won't go into too much detail, but this is where you have things like text overlays, animations, stuff like that all get stored in this tab here. So let's just go back to the library sidebar for now. And then next to that, we've got the event viewer. So this basically lets you view the different sections of your event, pretty self-explanatory. It's basically your media viewer. Next up, we have our preview window, and this lets you see your video project in real time. It'll show you the current resolution and frame rate of your project, the time codes, so where you're up to in the project in terms of time. And you can also zoom in and out here. So if you need to zoom in a certain section, just go up here to, the, to where it says viewer zoom, and you've got different zoom levels. So we can go to 200%. If you wanna move around, there's a little section here you can just drag around so you can see different sections of your video we can just go fit and then i'll snap it back to being able to see everything now next to that is one of the most important parts of all the final cut and that's the inspector window so by default you're on the color correction tab and if you double click it, you can make it go full length. But if we go to the first tab, this is where all of your transform settings are for your particular clip. So all of this information here applies to the current clip that is selected. So if I drag in another clip, when I click on this one, it's gonna be different settings to this one. So this is where we can do things like scale our clip. We can move the position around on the X and Y axis, and we can also rotate the clip if we need. So I'm just gonna reset that. In here, you can also change change compositing effects like the blend mode and the opacity. You can also crop clips if you need to. And I'm a big fan of the stabilization tool here as well. So if you need to stabilize a clip, that's where that is. Now if we jump across to the color tab, this is where all of our color correction settings are. And we're not gonna go into too much detail here, but you can adjust the tint for different sections of your footage. You can adjust the color temperature, tint, and hue. So there's a lot of different things you can change in here in terms of color. And it can get really complicated in a good way. You can do a lot of powerful stuff with color correction in Final Cut Pro. But for now, we don't have to worry too much about this. Next up, we've got the audio settings tab. This is relatively straightforward. You've got your volume here for that particular clip and then some audio effects. And then anytime you apply audio effects, they're always gonna show up here. And then last but not least, you've got this little inspection window. And this just shows you again, your frame rate and resolution and a bunch of other detailed information. That's probably not that interesting or relevant, but it's good to know that it's there. So let's just close this back up and move on to the timeline. And this is maybe the most exciting part because it's where you actually put your video together. But there's a few kind of main sections of the timeline that are worth pointing out. So the first is your tools just here. So you can select different tools for different tasks. So you've got the select tool, trim, blade, rain selection, stuff like that. And I would say it's always best to learn the keyboard shortcuts because you'll be able to edit way faster if you can quickly switch between tools using keyboard shortcuts. But if you forget, you can always come back here and see which one is assigned to which. So for example, the blade tool is assigned to B. So if I hit B, it'll bring up the blade tool. Or if I hit A, that'll take me back to the selection tool. Now if we move over to the other side of the timeline, we've got a few other options here, which are worth noting. So the first one is video and audio skimming. So if I turn that off, you can see that it no longer previews where I'm at with my mouse. So if you turn that back on, it'll give you a preview of exactly where you're at. So I actually really like that. I think it's a great thing in Final Cut. Helps you quickly see different sections of your footage. You can turn the audio skimming on and off. I tend to have it off just because it can get a bit annoying. So I'll leave that off. And then snapping is the other big thing to keep in mind. So if I turn that off, it's not going to snap me into position, like kind of magnetically, but I actually like it with snapping turned on. So now it'll just snap straight into position, which just speeds up your workflow because you're not kind of having to figure out if you're in the exact right position. Now, the last two things to be aware of is, first of all, this little tab here. This is your effects tab. And this gives you all sorts of different effects. You can install extra effects as well from third parties. And there's both video and audio effects all categorized into sections. So this comes in handy a lot and you'll find yourself using the effects tab heaps. Right next to that is the transitions tab. And again, you can install third party transitions. You don't have to just use the default ones, but this will give you all of the different 
transitions that you can use for your footage, for your video project. And there's some really cool ones in here. So we'll get to that a little bit later. Now, the last tip I'll give you is by default, you can't see any audio meters. So I like to turn that on. You just go up to window, show in workspace, and then hit audio meters. And this will bring up this little audio meter bar here. I like to expand it a little bit just so I can see where my audio levels are at. So you can see there's just a tiny bit of audio in this clip, but not much. But it's great to just have a little visual reference of where your audio is at throughout the video. Now, I just want to take a quick second out of the video to tell you about my newsletter, Create Better, which is designed to be a resource for new content creators in helping them improve the production quality of their videos. I share all of my latest tips, advice, and experience in a weekly email. I also share lots of discount codes and exciting products. So if that's something that interests you, then check out the link in the description. All right, so let's move on to the third part of the video, which is actually assembling your video. And this is kind of the fun part. So we've already brought some of our footage into the timeline, but obviously I don't want all of this clip. So the first thing I probably wanna do is just trim it to the section that I want. And the easiest way really to do this is just go to the edge of your clip. This little icon will appear and you can just drag. So I think I want it to come out to about here. And then if I grab the other side, side I think I want it to start just about here so if I play it that is what I wanted it's literally that easy now there's multiple ways of doing this you can also use the blade tool so if I hit B brings up the scissors and I can just find the part in this next clip that I want to cut out so I think that part looks pretty cool so I might start here I'll just click that'll create a cut in that clip and then I'll just bring it to the section that I want to end it on just about here click and then we've got these two cuts in our clip. If I go back to the selection tool with A, I can select this clip that I've cut off, hit backspace, which will delete it. Select the other part of the clip that I don't want, backspace and delete it. And we're left with just the part of the clip that I want. So that's great. Now, another way to trim the clips before you even bring them into the project is just scrub through your clip, find the section that you want. So I think that is looking pretty cool. And then just hit I for in. And here you'll see it'll create this yellow box around the clip with the start of the yellow box at the section of the clip that you want to start the clip at. Then just move to the other end of the clip, which is about here for me. Press O for out and you'll see it'll create this yellow selection box. Just drag that box down. Then your clip is literally all ready to go. So that's looking good. I'm just going to add in a couple of other clips. So let's go in out like this keyboard shot. I'm just going to find the right spot that I want. I think that's looking good in and out. Drag that in. That's looking good. Let's get this clip here. This is cool in out. And then last but not least, let's have this final overall shot of the desk. So in and then out. That feels good. Could finish off with that clip. This one's feeling a little bit long to me. So I think I might just shorten it a little bit. Now, if you want to zoom into your timeline, all you have to do is go command plus, And then you can see if you need to zoom out, you can just go command minus. So this lets you zoom in and out of the timeline, which is very handy. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit, just so I've got a bit more fine control over where I want to put my out point at. So let's just drag this back a bit. Think about where the chair appears is nice. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's just say with this clip here, I want to see that lamp a little bit more close up. So I'm just going to select the clip, go back to our transform section, and then just scale up the clip a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And as you can see, that whole clip is scaled up now, but none of the other clips are affected. So you can do this with each individual clip. You can adjust them however you want, just so that they look exactly how you need them to. All right, so next I want to add a little bit of music in the background. So let's just find some music that I've got from a previous project, drag it into the audio section. And now here you can see the entire song. So again, you can do the exact same thing. You can just play through it. I like that spot there. So let's just go to about 30 seconds in. It's probably gonna be too much. Just go out, drag that clip down and it will sit just beneath my clips. Now, obviously it's a little bit too long for my video. So I'm just gonna drag that back. So it's the same length. It'll snap into place. And we've got some music for our video, which is very cool. And you can see here, this gives you a sense of where the audio levels are at, which is why I like having the audio meters right here. So it's always super easy to see how loud my video is. Now, if you do need to adjust the volume of any of your clips or your music really quickly, there's a little line here and you can literally just click onto it and drag it up and down. And that will adjust the overall volume of your clip. So I might just turn that down to about negative five. That's a bit better. 
So that's really good to keep in mind. Now I'll quickly just show you some effects and transitions. So for this clip here, let's just imagine that we want to make it a little bit more interesting and add say some old film looks. Not quite sure this really works for this particular video, but let's just go with it so I can find, this is an old film look that I just installed. And all you have to do with an effect is just drag and drop it onto that clip. Now, as you can see, it has literally changed that clip to have that effect. And if I play through, you can see that clip has an effect. But that's literally how easy effects are in Final Cut Pro, which is another reason why I'm such a big fan of this software. Now let's just say we want to add a transition between this clip and that clip. So let's go to the transitions tab. Now we can add something basic like a cross dissolve, but let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's go to movements and let's go to slide. Slide's one of my personal favorites. I use it quite a lot. So all you have to do is just drag and drop it to that section and drop it onto the two clips. And there you go, straight away, you've got a transition added in, which is cool. Now if you want to adjust this particular transition, all you have to do is just drag it out to make it longer. So this will extend the length of the overall transition or you can shorten it just like that to as short as you like. And that's how easy adding and adjusting transitions in Final Cut is. All right, last but not least, let's add a title to this video. So if we go back up to the titles and generators window, we'll see all of the different titles that we can add into this video. Now, these are some extra ones that I've installed. So let's just go with this one. This looks cool. All we have to do again is just drag and drop. So let's drag and drop it into our video. Let's put it in at the start, I think. And I might add in, again, if I click on it, I can go to the text window here and adjust all of the different parameters for this particular title. So I can change the text to something like desk setup. And then I might just go to my transform section and scale down a little bit. Now if I hit play, my title is ready to go. It's literally that easy. So now let's just say my video is ready to go. I'm happy with it. I'm ready for it to be exported. That brings us to the very last section of this tutorial, which is to export your video. And again, this is also super easy and straightforward. All you have to do is go up to the top right here and there's got this little share button. Click on that and you've got all these different options, but let's just go add destination so we can set up a new export preset. Now just double click on export file. Now here you can select a format. So there's three sections, mastering, publishing, and broadcast. Now ignore broadcast, but mastering and publishing are the two main ones you want to look at. So mastering will give you a video file that's uncompressed. So it's the highest possible quality, whereas publishing will give you a more compressed version of your footage. It's a smaller file size, but the quality will just be a little bit lower. So generally, if I'm uploading to YouTube, I'll just go mastering and just go video and audio. So it's the highest possible quality. You can leave the video codec the same as source and you can rename this whatever you want. So I might just rename it default export settings close that now we've got up here our default export settings will be available hit that you can name it what you want so let's just name it desk setup feature export all of your settings should be correct and then just go next find the folder that you want to save it into and then just press save now up here you'll see a little circular icon happening if you click on it it'll give you the progress and just like that the clips exported ready to go ready to upload to youtube and share with the world now if you feel like you got the hang of all of that there's so much more to learn about editing in final cut pro which is why i created this video here where i share my exact process of how i edit all of my youtube videos in final cut pro to help take your content to the next level 